Desire and I long. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You're all together worthy, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me.
meant that he gave his only begotten son. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. Turn around and greet somebody and tell them you're so happy to see them. What if I'm not happy to see them? Come down here. We'll pray for you. Until right, so you get that right. If you've been using your phone to get on the Internet during church or to invite people to watch or whatever, and you got on there this morning and it didn't work, um, tell it to forget the network. Completely reroute, reconfigure the router. Okay? Uh, something happened last week, and when it did, it, did, it lost all configuration. It went... And forget network, and then when it comes back up and pops back up in your list of available networks, the mornings out their updates for Mevos, you know, and then you're right in the middle of getting ready to do your service, and then, oh, you got to do an update to get on, and it takes, huh? Well, maybe we need to come up with another way, <laughs> hallelujah, um, to do that so that it's better. Enjoyed the rainy day yesterday. I enjoyed it. All the weeks of working on Saturdays and the heat and sweating like a, 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 a pig. I mean, jumping. Like, I look like I jumped in the swimming pool every Saturday this summer. Tim, Tim enjoyed the rain. Okay, buddy. <laughs> He's still enjoying the rain, apparently. <coughs> I mean, it was a hot, muggy, nasty summer. And I'm telling you, yesterday being 70s and rainy, you know what I did? Who said that? Yeah, you go, Adam. Yeah. Announcements. Uh, next week, Jess and Kappa ministry. Wow, that was exciting. There we go. Yeah, that's, 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 that's a little bit better. Hallelujah. At the beginning of the summer, and this is the date that worked out. So it's on a Sunday. I just I don't even remember. Um, so um, hallelujah! <clears throat> it's all it's just different. Uh, it's different. So uh, I enjoy to do here, and then the following week. Basically, the church is providing potatoes. I think somebody's bringing green beans. Have that. Uh, we do want you to sign up and bring some dessert. Okay. Fair cake. Yeah. Or volunteer. Uh, do, uh, do. Okay. Out here. I don't know what's going on out here. It could be a bad line out to the building. I, it just all kinds of things. Where I was, right in mid-sentence there when I saw interrupt. And, um, you know, like we're, going, we're planning on eating outside if, unless it's rainy. Otherwise, we're planning on eating outside. We got um, – all righty. Hallelujah. Um <clears throat> Then don't also don't forget we've uh, we have finished our Bible study on the Bible in the light of our redemption with E. W. Kenyon. We have not made a decision about how we're heading as far as a long term study yet. So we might have a couple of weeks of you know just Wednesday night sermons, whatever, and then we'll be looking into maybe a, another Bible study, maybe not as long. Well, I did do one for two and a half years. I don't want to do that. One. Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing 
all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Jesus used signs and wonders and miracles to draw people in. Why are we going to be left with less? And especially in light of his words to the church, that the works that I do shall you do and greater than these because I go into the Father. Well, what was going to happen when he went to the Father? And he was going to send the gift of the Holy Ghost to anoint the church. He even told us to go wait. He told the early church to go wait and not do anything until they received that power. Yet we got modernists who come along and go, well, we don't need, we just need intellect, we need intelligent faith. We don't need the miracle. Signs, wonders, and miracles. Hello? Y'all hear you going home. I mean, who... In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. In the beginning was the Logos, the complete sum and full dissertation of God. Logos, differing from Rhema, in that Rhema is a specific Word, highlighted, illuminated, revealed. The Logos being the whole. So Jesus wasn't a Rhema, he was the whole. Hello, he was a Logos, the complete encompassing of God. And he worked signs and wonders and miracles. And then we come along, and we know in part, and we see in part, and they tell us, we don't need miracles for us. You arrogant. We need them more than ever. I said, we need them more than ever. We need power. We need the glory. We need the miracles. We need the signs. We need the wonders. So that just like Jesus, one place said this in, in the ministry of Jesus, and I, I don't think I know that I have it written down, but it says that he went somewhere to preach, and they came to hear the miracles brought them to hear the message. Hello. Hello. So in order to accomplish the things we need to accomplish today, we do no, we no longer, Obama had this right. Now, he wasn't saying it from a, a position of being a church authoritarian or a historian. He was saying it because he he's, he's anti-church. And I don't care if you study him, he's not a Christian. His belief system is not Christianity. The call he calls his pastor is not a pastor. That church has Ichabod written all over it. Thank you, Janice and Jerry, for your support. Ichabod means the Spirit of God has departed. Okay? The America is now a pluralistic nation, meaning the worship of many different gods. So it used to be you could say you were a Christian and you could share Jesus with people and they would they they would at least and it's things that using the your God can't do anything for me. I don't even believe in your God. All this kind of stuff. the church is gone and you're going to go out and give a mental argument with these people you're going to try to have a, a logical discussion with them who have been well schooled and indoctrinated in our institutions of higher learning of how not to be a Christian to be at at um, the most religious they get is secular humanism. That they're God. And you're going to go out and have a, have a discussion with them and convince them through your discussion? Oh, that's a myth. 
man wrote the Bible. They got all kinds of arguments that they had. We have hidden the supernatural church, and we brought out of the closet the uh, cater to the flesh church. You know, we've made worship, quote, worship. Some of it, I'm like, why would you? Just shut up. I can get more. And that was a song about God, in case you don't know. Singing, you'll never walk alone. Okay? With the Phil Spector wall-to-wall sound, Medley's bass just echoing off the walls and all that kind of stuff. Loved it. Because we've removed online saying, um, you don't have to speak, you're a hater. No, I just follow the Bible. You're a dummy. I said that. Be nice if you let me know next time. <laughs> but here we go. So Jesus goes about healing, preaching, teaching, and healing. Then <clears throat> giving testimony of Jesus in the book of Acts, it says this, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all those God was with him. Having a trampoline in your backyard is racist. Of a person of color as the new terminology. Of a color, and you've got a trampoline, I guess that makes you a Tom. Some professor was. She hoped she died. You um, could not enjoy it because her crown has stones. Well, but thinking, hoping the queen, her statements, she loved Jesus. The one that will bring tears to you is the, she told the archbishop of the Church of England that she wished she could live until Jesus returned so she could cast her crown at his feet. She wanted to be able to cast her crown at his feet. Hallelujah. That's pretty strong. You know? So there's evil out there. There's evil everywhere. Our institutions of higher learning are filled with evil people. And you're going to go hang. No. We are to preach the gospel and have signs and wonders follow us. We are not to sit here and have four-hour debates. Hello? It's like arguing with a Jehovah's Witness. I, I, was with a, I knew a guy one time, finally one of them came to me, he just got fed up with it. He said, look, you only believe 144,000 are going to heaven. Let me just tell you something. I know two of them, so you're down to 143,998. Because I'm born again and so-and-so is born. I know we're going to heaven. One came to my door one day, and I, I, before I knew it, the door was open. I thought, oh, gosh. And I, 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 you know, I, I was young. I would argue back then. You know, I said, Jesus is God. No, he's not. He's a God. I said, only three Bibles in the world print. You use the article A in front of it, and two of them you guys print. On your presses. Every other translation in the world does not have the article A in front of it. Jesus is God. And he said, I and my father are one. And they had some come back for that. Said, well, there's no need in talking to you. <laughs> Bye. So they're, they're just drilled. So what is going to make the difference? Hello? We have to be a supernatural church. We must stop depending on human reasonings and human arguments. 
We share the truth. We live the truth. We have the miracle signs and wonders follow the truth. And we just let it ha what happens happen. Amen? How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. He was anointed to preach. He was anointed to heal. Hello? There was the anointing on him to do that. And then Jesus in turn says, the works that I do shall you do and greater than these shall you do because I go unto my Father. This says, go tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Why? So we can go out doing good and healing all. We can take the anointing. Look at Matthew 28. Paul even said that people are one through the foolishness of preaching. Yeah, call it foolishness. To the carnal mind it is. We want debate. We want scientific, uh, what's the term called when you prove something out scientifically? scientifically? Huh? Scientific evidence, is another, there's another term I'm looking for. Uh, yeah, you're right. It's, it's scientific evidence, but there's, there's another term for that. When you're proving something out scientifically, there is a, for the, for the actual action of that, it's called huh, scientific method. Yes, look in the room and see see him walking around in it. Hello? You can't use infrared film and catch his body heat. There's no there's no doing there's no doing it through scientific methods, through different means in scientific realm of proving something. And of course if they can't prove it, they make it up. Okay. Listen to Jesus in Matthew's version of the Great Commission. Amen. I'm sorry. Let's read Matthew's. All power or all authority is given to me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore, teaching all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things, whatever I commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even into the end of the earth. It was Mark's I was after. I'm sorry. Uh, Mark says, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils or exercise authority over demons. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere. Signs following. Our margin says with accompanying signs. There is something so necessary about the supernatural church to break through the mental barriers that the world has created in rejecting the gospel. Amen. Are y'all here or gone home? Well, that don't make sense to me. You can't reason with the unreasonable. Paul gets into one place, there's Sadducees and Pharisees. Now, the Sadducees didn't believe in the resurrection. The Pharisees did. And he, so he appealed to the Pharisees because he was called on the uh, basis of the resurrection. They believed in the resurrection. Sadducees didn't. How do you remember them? Which one was which? The Sadducees did. Okay? That's, that's corny. Because you, you'll never forget. Now, will you? Uh, you know, that helps you remember from now on, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I, if you don't believe in the resurrection, you're among most men all the most miserable. Among all men the most miserable. And so mark the Lord working with them. They're preaching. Now he's going to confirm that with accompanying signs. Now we come at the church the line, we don't need miracles anymore. 
the early church followed that same pattern. Now you do. The same anointing. Well, when did Jesus get anointed? Remember, when you go to Luke's gospel, the fourth chapter, when Jesus was led, the Bible says this, and he was led of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil for the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. And in each case, he responded with, it is written, it is written, it is it written. And Jesus returned again into Jerusalem. Listen to this. Not full of the Spirit. So what, what happened right before Jesus went into the wilderness? He was baptized of John in the river Jordan. The Holy Ghost descended upon him in the, form of a, in the bodily form of a dove. And a voice came from heaven and said, this is my beloved son whom I'm well pleased. And so he went into the wilderness full of the Spirit. Conquered Satan did all. And he went into the synagogue as on the Sabbath day, as his custom was. And it was handed to him the book of the prophet Isaiah, or really the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. And he found the place where it was written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he hath anointed me. Came out. In the power of the gospel to the poor, to send me to heal the brokenhearted, to them that are broke, the seventh of the seven years of Jubilee, and to heal and to set liberty, set people free. He was anointed. And it's because it was what people, interesting that Jesus went ahead and made it real clear. That these set and you go preach believe hello Jesus is making it very clear that Jesus did not heal as the Son of God. Translation, he stripped himself of his rights deity to do what he did. He did it as a man anointed under the covenant. And then in turn says, you're going to do the same thing. Now, if we're going to do the same thing because he was God, then that would mean he'd have to become God. We know that's not what he's saying. I, he, he says, I'm operating as a man under the covenant, anointed by the Holy Ghost. And you are going to go out and do the same thing, anointed. Yeah, there you go, Philippians 2 in the King James. Made, stripped himself of no reputation. One translation says he stripped himself of his rights to deity and to glory. Okay? He didn't access them. All right? When he did what he did. He did not do what he did to prove he was the son of God. He did what he did to show us how we're to live, making clay pigeons and making them turn into real pigeons fly off. I know that was in the movie, The Shroud of Turin, but it's, it's not what he did. There's no biblical record of that. Okay? He wasn't being translocated from Jerusalem to South America. That's also in that movie. Okay? No! What was he doing from 12 to 30? He was a carpenter waiting on his ministry. Why 30? The Jews did not believe that you came of age to do certain things until you were 30. They wouldn't have received his ministry at 20. Okay? Everything had to be done. God did everything for a reason. And so he says, here, watch me. Watch what I'm doing. I'm doing all this. I'm healing the sick. I'm casting out devils. I'm raising the dead. I'm working signs, wonders, and miracles. Crowds are following him. And he says this. Now, what he says, the works that I'm doing, you're going to do. And even greater than these, because I'm going to the Father. Now, there's a big, huge, I know I said this recently, there's a big argument over whether greater meant more powerful miracles or more in number. And I have to believe that it's time and space. In a physical body. He took old flesh. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. We held his own his glory as only begotten of the Father. Amen. Tabernacles among us. When the Holy Ghost came on the whole church, 
the church can go all over the place and more people can get saved and we can spread it everywhere. But we're supposed to be doing each one of those individual, hello, offspring, as it were, are to be doing the same thing he did. The same thing all over the world. 700 million, a billion. Amen. We're all supposed to be doing that. We're not to institutionalize it. Hello. We're not to make it, you know, a religion. We're to be followers of Christ and imitators. Be imitators of God as your children. We're to imitate him. We're to do like him. But that bracelet, what would Jesus do? I wish people who wore it would actually do what Jesus did. response to some some ugly attitude you had or you you had some bad thought about somebody how about in response to going laying hands on sick folk casting some devils out amen i mean walking the authority and power you see somebody that's sick what would jesus do he'd lay hands on them now well, why does he could, why did he choose you know preaching and teaching? Because his ways aren't your ways. You go to Isaiah fifty five. His ways aren't your ways. His thoughts are not your thoughts. They're higher. Are you here? The way he would do it ain't the way you would do it. Cause and then we go hide behind some man made answer, so we don't have to be notified or noticed as a weenie. Hello. We need to be bold as a lion. The one thing that the disciples prayed for was to be bold. Amen. To be bold. How? By stretching forth thine hand to heal in the name of thy holy child. What if it don't work? Brother Hagin used to say he had people fall dead in his prayer line. What did you do? He said, I went on and prayed for the next person. I couldn't do them. That wasn't his job. His job was to lay hands on the sick. Let the anointing, them receive that anointing or not receive that anointing. Hello? Y'all hear you going home. See, we're so afraid of failure and people's judgment of that failure that we don't want to do what the, the head of the church told us to do. I heard a church bounce go back in the corner and say, amen. <coughs> so, Jesus tells them that. We have the day of Pentecost. Holy Ghost falls. They stumble out. 3,000 get saved. Then they start going into action. They start spreading out. Acts 3. Now, Peter and John went into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. That's about, about um, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Jews consider daybreak about morning about 6 o'clock in the morning, so the ninth hour would be about 3 o'clock. A certain man, laying from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who see Peter and John about to go into the temple asking alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on He gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. He thought he was going to get some money. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have. When did he get it? In that upper room, when that power came on him. I said, in that upper room, when that power came on him. I give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. <clears throat> and he took him by the right hand, lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Now he's healed. 
We need more cripples walking. We need more blind see. We need, no, need more deaf hearing. We need more oppressed liberated. We're not going to do it with a smoke machine. Are you here? We're not going to do it being cute. I heard somebody recently say in a meeting, I can't help but feel like that preacher. And like they say, it's not biblical. You don't fake it till you make it. That's self-deception. What do you do if you ain't there? You go right back into this book and you stay there. And you keep going back. And you keep going back. And you keep staying there. And you let the Holy Ghost teach you. And you let the Holy Ghost come on you. And you stay in it. <clears throat> but you don't go out and fake it until you make it. I hate, I've hated that phrase since the day when I heard it. I thought it was just so unbiblical. And you might say, I thought that was a great, oh, no. Bless you. If you do, I'm sorry. Jesus didn't say that, but I'll tell you what, it'll sell a bunch of books and tapes. We, we charismatic preachers now have come up with the phrases that'll, buy, that'll sell a tape series. Hello? I, <clears throat> well, you can make money for your ministry. I don't care. I'm not here to sell the ministry. God uses the tithe and the offerings to support the work of God. Hello. Now, we, if we write a book, we'll write a book. But I'm just, and we're not doing it for, I remember Brother Hagin said this. When the, the Lord was dealing with him about putting his audio tapes in the book form. And some men came to him and said, Brother Hagin, you need to put all your, these tapes that you got and put them in the book form. You can make a lot of money. And I think he said he waited until he knew in his heart the reason he was doing it was to get the word out and not to make money. He wouldn't do it with the thought he could make a lot of money on it in his heart. He refused. Because he wasn't about making the money. He's about getting the gospel out. I heard him preaching on, you know, I'm believing God for this kind of gift or this, you know, half a million dollar, one time, half a million dollar gift to the ministry. Now, other people have taken that and gone off and used it. I heard Brother Hagin say it, when, where they got it from. He said this. He said, I'm believing God now for a one million dollar gift. One time, $1 million gift to the ministry. He said, what do you need that for? He said, I'll tell you what we're going to do with it. We're going to go on more television stations. We're going to go on more radio stations. We're going to print more books. We're going to reach more people with the gospel than ever before. He wanted the money to preach the gospel with, to spread the, to spread the gospel with, to get it out there. He wasn't concerned about his luxurious lifestyle. Amen? He wanted to get the word out. All right. Acts 4. Look over there. Anybody hungry? Now this is, uh, let's look at Acts 4. Right after this guy is leaping, walking, praising God, and he's going to tell everybody he got healed in the name of Jesus, they, caught, they bring Peter and John in. The religious folks get upset. Can you believe religious people somebody gets healed that they walk by every stinking day and they get healed and they're mad at the guys that brought healing to him so they're gonna call them in for a meeting with the council Of course, they had preached to them and told them, you know, about Jesus. And um, let me get down here upon them. Being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in hold until the next day. Now it was easy to tie. How be it many of them which heard the word believed? <laughs> so they saw the guy get healed. And they all were like, that guy got healed. The miracle got the whole crowd stirred up. And it came to pass of the morrow, the rulers and the elders and the scribes 
and Ananias the high priest, and Caiaphas, and John, and Alexander, and as many as were kindred of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. Now, this is the power team. This is our congressmen and senators and executive branch, the rulers. And when they had set them, that's Peter and John in the midst, they asked him, by what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, remember uh, lying, denying Peter, cussing Peter? You say that far after this. Said unto them, ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of a good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand whole before you. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby ye must be saved. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived, listen to this, that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. And beholding the man that was healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. Wow. Power hungry and the power elitist are upset. Bring them in. But they don't know what to do because the guy's healed. And everybody in town knows the guy's healed. Because they all walk past him every day to the temple. And he's up walking around telling everybody he got healed by the name of Jesus. And, they said, and um, when they commanded them to go out, uh, out aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves. They put him out and said, well, 